Hello and welcome to another episode of the Road Coach Podcast, the show where I share what I've learned from years of living on the road through research and experimentation about health and well-being so that if you are like me and you spend a lot of time away from home for work or for fun, you can hopefully not only survive but thrive even when you are out of your element. As always, if you're listening on your favorite podcasting app, please leave us a rating or share with your friends and family if you like what you hear. It helps us continue to make episodes and check out our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at the road coach podcast, where you can see all of the material that I'm putting up on the screen as I go along and you can follow along with me with the data that I am presenting. If you'd like to support the show, the best way you can do that is obviously share it with anyone you know or check us out on patreon.com slash the road coach podcast uh, where you can become a member uh, and donate to the show that way as well. On our last episode, I talked about uh, the type of protein that we consume and whether or not it really matters. And we discovered that different sources of protein provide different benefits and some are definitely better than others. And at the end of it, I uh, concluded with the data that simply taking amino acid profile or an amino acid powder um, that contains all of the nine essential amino acids um, is probably just as good as consuming protein in any other source. Uh, but we also talked about the top sources of protein being uh, whey protein, casein, uh, eggs, and meat um, as, your, as your sort of your best um, forms of protein and most digestible forms of protein. Um, today I wanted to get into a little bit more about the science on the way we use that protein and the different methodologies that are that have been developed over time to discover whether we're whether or not we can use the protein that we eat because it's one thing to or to eat a good source of protein and enough of it but if your body's not using all of the protein that you're eating or is not capable of digesting the amino acids into um uh in in, in their full amounts to rebuild your muscles and to use the protein inside your um inside your body then uh, you're consuming something for absolutely no benefit, and we obviously don't want that. So I'm going to start today. Um, this is this is from uh, the first website I have up here is an article from Labdoor Magazine. It's a blog that this gentleman wrote. Uh, I'm just going to check his name, give him proper credit. Uh, Neil Thanadar, and he talks about the the current different scales for ranking proteins and their types and what they're used for and why we why we rate them on different scales. Um, so there's a couple different things that you're going to hear out there when you get more into nutrition and you want to understand um, not only eating all of the proper nutrients that you need throughout the day, but getting the proper ratios of your macronutrients, protein, fat, and carbohydrate. Um, but then when it gets down into protein, the type of protein that you're eating and then how efficient is your body at digesting that protein and utilizing it to rebuild your structures. So on that note, we've got four here, uh, four different sort of measurements that were discovered over time. And they've become, you know, more and more, the, the more recent the discovery of a specific ranking scale is, um, tends to be the more, um, the more acceptable measurement of how you should measure your protein. Um, so the older methods kind of fall off as not being as relevant. But if you hear them, it's good to know what they are um, and so that you can understand whether or not they're still relevant or why something else might be more relevant today um, based on more current research. So the four uh, ranking scales that this gentleman goes through in his article are the protein efficiency ratio, PER, the bio biological value, BV, net protein utilization, or NPU, and then the Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score, or the PDCAAS. Um, and I'll go through each of them just quickly so you understand what they are, because all protein sources will be measured on these, on these rankings, um, and some are more valuable than others. So the protein efficiency ratio, the PER, the first one, it determines the protein quality by measuring animal growth. So in this rating, rats are fed a test protein and measured for weight gain versus every gram of consumed protein. So the computed value is then compared to a standard value of 2.7, which is corresponding to casein, protein, casein protein's effect on growth. Any value higher than 2.7 indicates an excellent protein source and anything lower would be subpar. Um, but just because it works in rats doesn't mean it is as well correlated to human growth. So then as other methods were developed, the PER kind of fell off as not as not as good 
um, to use because it's just not as relevant to humans. The bio biological value, it determines protein quality by measuring how efficiently the human body uses the dietary protein it brings in. So it measures the nitrogen obtained from dietary protein that is retained in the body and then in theory would be used for tissue and muscle formation. It divides that by the total amount of nitrogen absorbed from the dietary protein. So since the biological value is a function of how much protein is absorbed and how much ends up being utilized, the theoretical top score is 100. Um, however, since a whole egg, was, which is the best whole source of protein, whole food source of protein content, was originally set as the digestibility standard, it's possible for protein sources like whey protein concentrate to exceed this value. So when we look at this, you'll see that whey protein is a higher than 100% efficient, meaning it is better than egg um, in, from, from a biological value standpoint. After BV, we have NPU or net protein utilization. And that aims to determine the percentage of the amino acids that you consume that are eventually converted into proteins and utilized. Um, to maximize this, the protein sources must both be easy to digest and provide an effective ratio of amino acids. So it's not just about digestibility and usability, but the ratio of the essential amino acids is in their proper, uh, is in the proper ratio to be able to use them effectively. Um, and they're measured it says here they're measured indirectly using the protein intake versus the amount of nitrogen that you excrete. So they're assuming that the amount of nitrogen you excrete means that the inverse of that is retained in the body and hence that's what you're using. Um, so it's not perfect, but it's much better than the other methods. And then they have the, a newer thing, the PDCAAS, Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score, and it actually measures protein quality based on human essential amino acid requirements and our ability to digest it. So what happens is the protein is compared to a standard amino acid profile and it's given a score from zero to one with one indicating the maximum amino acid digestibility. Common protein supplements like whey, coat, casein, and soy all receive 1.0 scores. Meat and soybeans at 0.9, vegetables and other legumes at 0.7 and whole wheat and peanuts around 0.25 to 0.55 because they have less digestibility. Um, so he state, the author states here that PDCAAS is currently considered the um, the most reliable source of protein quality means so the higher the number the better um, for overall human nutrition but there's actually a new one as well um, the DIAAS um, and we'll get into that as well he doesn't cover that in his article here but we'll explain the differences and what that is so those are your kind of your big four measurements um, and then I'm going to bring up a another thing here um, so this is just a chart of various foods. This is from Wikipedia, but this shows various foods and their different scores um, for all of these different ratios. So you can see the first column is PER, the efficiency ratio, ratio oh my goodness, <laughs> protein efficiency ratio, the NPU, the biological value, your digestibility score, the absorption rate. Um, absorption rate we talked about in the last episode as well, how long it takes you to actually absorb the protein from the food that you're eating. Um, with whey being up to 20 grams per hour and something like eggs being uh, only about 5 grams per hour. Um, so as I mentioned in that episode as well, um, if you consume three eggs in one sitting, it's going to take you about 24 hours to use three large eggs. It's going to take you about 24 hours to actually absorb all of that protein into your body. Um, and then they have an amino acid score. Um, the next column, though, is really our key metric for most research today, which is the PDCAAS, uh, and that shows for all of these different food types. And then they have the DIAAS, which we'll get into, the Digestible Indispensable Amino Acid Score. So that last one, it's a quality method proposed in March 2013 by the Food and Agricultural Organization to replace the PDCAAS um, because it measures the exact same thing as the digestibility, but it measures it at the end of your digestive tract. So the ileum um, or the, the, the basic, the, the most distal point of your small intestine, um, where the last bit of absorption can occur. And the PDCAAS measures it throughout the entire digestive tract. So they, the researchers now feel that the DIAAS is the most accurate method to measure quality of protein. Okay. So, um, when you look at this list, the, the ones that all score very high or even higher, um, than one, um, in the DIAAS are whey protein, casein, egg. Um, and they do not have measurements here for uh, beef or oat 
Um, wheat rice is very low. Pea protein is around 0.89 on the PDCAAS and 0.82 on the DIAAS score. Um, and I highlight pea protein because those who are vegan or vegetarian um, tend to, uh, or those with lactose intolerance, tend to lean towards pea protein because it is the most complete vegetable source of protein on the market as well. And the current protein um, powder that I use from Whole Earth and Sea, it's called Protein and Greens, uh, uses a pea protein as, as the method of, um, of delivering most of the protein in the supplement there. Now, um, the next column here, which is kind of hidden, I think, by my face, is the limiting amino acid. So what when you talk about the, um, the DIAAS, the Digestible Indispensable Amino Acid Score, um, what, what is preventing it from having a higher score, essentially, it shows in the next column of what, what amino acid or amino acids is limiting in its ratios to give it a higher score. Um, and so you can see here, for example, pea protein doesn't have a higher score because methionine and cysteine limit it from getting any better. There's not enough of that in the protein. Um, and you can see with whey protein, it's histidine that prevents it from being any higher in a DIAAS situation than around one. Um, it hovers slightly below or slightly higher depending on the quality of the whey protein. Casein protein is clearly the best here. Um, there's no limiting acid, limiting amino acid in its profile, um, but it is also very slow absorbing. So um, if we can keep, I'll just pull this up here. Um, casein protein absorption rate. Uh, casein is only about three grams per hour. So um, if you were to consume, what is that? Three times 24, 75 grams worth of protein in a day. It takes you a full 24 hours to absorb that into your body. Um, so that being said, I'm going to go to another site here about um, the DIAAS. And this shows... Um, this site here shows the ratio of amino of the essential amino acids within the protein um, that it are required to for complete digestibility essentially. So once you all the numbers tend to go down as you get older. Once you're over three years old, they say it's pretty constant. You need a certain number of milligrams of each of these nine essential amino acids per gram of protein to be 100% digestible or the best possible form of digestion. That you, the highest score on DIAAS. Um, and because of that, I would say that a lot of the different protein sources that you're getting in powders or, um, supplements may not have the same ratios. And so you can easily calculate for yourself, what is a good ratio, um, and how much protein are you really getting and how much of that protein are you using when you're getting it? So we all know that whey is a good source. We all know that casein is a good source. Um, we all know that pea protein is slightly behind that, and we know that eggs and chicken are a very good source as well. Really, any meat protein is good, but slightly less than whey, casein, and egg for any meat, essentially. So when I'm looking at the whole earth and sea product, this is going to be probably really hard to see, but the whole earth and sea product that I use, the protein and greens um, with a pea protein, gives an amino acid profile on the the label itself, um, and I'll pull this up in bigger detail so that you can see it, but I wanted to look at the ratios of essential amino acids required per gram of protein to get maximum absorption. Um, and then the next um, supplement that I'm going to switch to is just an essential amino acid profile, so I'm not wasting any money on any of the other stuff that we don't need. Let's just get the building blocks of the protein into our body. Um, the cheapest way possible. And this gives us, obviously, I think I worked it out at 67 cents or 68 cents per serving for protein. And it looks like it has a lot more amino acids in general in it. However, does that mean I'm getting more protein? Um, because in a scoop of this, um, it says it's 10.7 grams in one scoop. How many grams of protein does that equate to? Um, it's interesting when you start to do this math, what you find out. So the next thing that I'm going to pull up here is I just did up a quick chart. Okay. So this shows that's the exact same chart. The essential amino, nine essential amino acids are on your left here. The milligrams of each amino acid required 
per gram of protein to give it a 100% perfect score for utilization in the body, okay? When I look at the total amino acid profile of a scoop of the Allmax powder versus a scoop of my pea protein powder, these are the different levels of amino acids in each, okay? And you can check, you can, you can add this in. Um, if anyone wants a copy of the spreadsheet, it's pretty easy to make, but I can flip you a copy if you just send me a comment. Um, and then what I did is I took my Allmax essential amino acids powder and then my whole earth and sea amino acid profile, and I simply divided it by the ratios needed per gram of protein to make it completely digestible. And you can see in the amino acid powder from Allmax, you know, some of these like isoleucine, leucine, and lysine, you know, were 42 times, 54 times the amount needed per gram of protein. So essentially that loosely, loosely equates to 42 grams of protein when you just look at those three, which are called branched chain amino acids, and those are the highest rated um, amino acids, essential amino acids um, correlated with muscle growth. So it looks like in a scoop, you're getting somewhere around 42 or 54 grams of protein when you only measured the branched chain amino acids in there. However, if you're looking at total, total amino acid profile, the limiting factor in this amino acid is actually phenylalanine and histidine. So this actually looks, you know, more similar to a whey protein concentrate um, in the sense that histidine is the limiting factor in whey protein for it not to have more digestibility. So even though you could say that you're getting quote unquote 54 grams of protein, essentially when you look at the highest ranked amino acid in this powder per scoop, the limiting factor is the phenylalanine and the histidine. So you could very well not be using the rest of those amino acids. They could just simply be excreted from your body. Now that's not the case. And so it's very hard to say exactly how many grams of protein that you're getting from this scoop, um, uh, from this scoop of essential amino acids from Allmax, but you're certainly not getting any more usability than the lowest possible ratio, and that's your phenylalanine at only eight times the ratio. So if you had a perfect protein, essentially what this works out to is only eight grams of total protein for utilization. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to use the other amino acids and get the benefits of something that is more than eight grams of protein, but that means that from a perfect ratio perspective, you're missing enough phenylalanine and histidine to make this a much better uh, protein supplement than it is. So I'm going to do this for a couple of other amino acid powders, um, and I'll report back in a couple of episodes once I've done some more work to try and figure out what the best profile is based on the latest rankings or the latest um, uh, rating scale of protein. And I'll see if we can find a better amino acid profile in a powder that is also cost effective um, and compare it to these on another episode. Then when I looked at my whole earth and sea protein and greens, it's actually extremely consistent around your 14 to 17 grams of protein based on your optimal ratios. But the limiting factor here is methionine and cysteine, which is only at five. So overall, if we're taking the lowest common denominator, the essential amino acids um, powder from Allmax is a definitely a better protein source than the pea protein source that I'm currently using. So it's a no-brainer to move to an amino acid powder as my supplement if it's just protein that I'm looking for. However, it's still very limited in that it's the difference between five times the ratio of one essential amino acid versus eight times another one. And a lot of the rest, we don't know if it's really being used for much. So that's all I wanted to go through today, the different rating scales for, for protein, um, how you can understand what they mean and what proteins are best. At the end of the day, if you're interested in this stuff, it's great to learn the science behind it. However, stick to the basics if you just need to get your protein on the road. The best ones, whey, casein, pea protein in third, and your whole food sources, egg and meats. That's basically what you need to think about when you're traveling. I hope you liked this episode. As always, please leave us a rating and review. Share it with your friends if you like what you hear. And until next time, I hope you're not only surviving, but thriving, even when you're out of your element.